Well, when I first went to college, I started studying the Chinese language, and I took you know, different kinds of courses that had to do with Asia. Some dealt with Asian religion and philosophy, some with more contemporary politics and history. Uh, you know, as I said, the Vietnam War was, was, it was, it was past its peak by 1972, but it was still going on. I remember going to anti-war demonstrations in 1973 and 1974 and 1975. So I think, you know, those contemporary were, events were very much in people's minds. Uh, when China first started opening up, uh, I think there was a lot of fascination with what had been a very closed society. You know, and frankly, a lot of academics in the West initially were quite attractive, uh, quite attracted uh, to what seemed to be the, the lifestyle in China. You know, there seemed to be good things uh, about Chinese communism in terms of bringing literacy to the broad mass of the people uh, and in creating a society where there was very little crime. So I think there was a certain uh, romance that Western academics felt toward China. You know, probably some people were smarter than me and they, and they did not buy into that, but I think quite a few people initially uh, were attracted to what had been achieved by Chinese communism. Uh, and then frankly, you know, as I've spent more time getting to know China and, you know, read different things, I've come to see that there were really a lot of terrible things that were happening uh, during the Mao period in China. So I think for me, you know, personally, uh, the lifetime experience has been kind of getting more and more a real understanding of what's going on in China and having a, a more mixed or more complex view of the, both the past and the present. You know, when I was in college, I studied Chinese language and Chinese history and Vietnamese history, but I didn't study any modern economics at all. And then I had a chance to live in Taiwan for a year in 1975-76. And I lived with a Chinese family. I studied Chinese. I bought a motorcycle and traveled all around the country. And that had a very profound effect on me. Taiwan was growing very quickly. It had adopted this, it had embraced globalization and adopted an export-oriented strategy. I lived with a family of intellectuals, but my American buddy lived with a family that ran a textile factory. And just seeing how things actually worked on the ground had a very, you know, very striking effect on me. So my initial thinking that this process of integration was good for developing countries that first started living in Taiwan as a 20-year-old and not having any economics background, just observing what was happening in a textile factory, observing what was happening with, with development in Taiwan. So later when I chose to study economics and I started studying theory, uh, I had that in my mind, what had happened in Taiwan. So when I saw academics debating different strategies for development, you know, is it good to protect domestic industry or is it good to open up to the world economy? My, I initially approached that from the point of view of the manufacturers in Taiwan, what had been their experience, what had been their success, and I found that experience a lot more convincing than any particular economic theory.